I want you to come to an understanding and see if you can draw some comparisons between the little story at the beginning about Oscar Romero and uh, present times. <coughs> Oscar Romero was appointed by Paul VI to be the Archbishop of El Salvador. When he went to El Salvador, what was going on? They had tremendous political turbulence. It was awful. The government was killing people with words and with actions. And Romero went there, and in this tremendous time, where they were also persecuting the church, because the church was not identifying with what was going on politically in that society. So Romero was an ardent, ardent proponent of the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. And it was quite obvious that that is exactly what he was doing in those troubled times. And you know what happened to him? When he was saying Mass at the altar, someone stood at the back of the door, a soft target, and shot him dead. On October 14th of this year, he was proclaimed a saint. Why was he proclaimed a saint? Because... He deliberately was out and doing and preaching the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. Think about that. We are in turbulent times, aren't we? We are seeing the church persecuted in many ways, even by her own. The internal conflict. I used to tell priests when I was principal of Newman High School and Boylan High School, and uh, they would put priests in the faculty. I'd always meet with them before they put, I put, we let them go into the classroom. And I would tell them this, Father, I don't care if you're liberal, and I don't care if you're conservative. I know which one is winning these days, by the way. I says, I don't care. What I do care about is that you preach and you teach the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. And if you don't do that, I will be down your throats. Now, do you think I was down any of their throats? Yes. Yes. Because their methodology of liberalism or conservatism was far more important to them in the church than the message and mission of Jesus Christ. At least that's what it seemed. So anyhow, I'm going to ask you this very question. We are living at a time, and I know this, point blank, that I am really wondering if we really know what's going on in our surroundings where we have that urgent, exigent necessity of finding ourselves motivated to preach the message and mission of Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. I found this absolutely obscene. I'm watching TV the other day, and these reporters were on a college campus, and they were asking one, you know, college, higher level of education, garbage. They were asking students, who do you support? And they would mention a name. And then the reporter said, well, do you know what policies they support? No, but they market themselves well. I heard that over and over and over. They don't know what they're voting for. Do you know how you are voting for Christ in this society? Like Romero, why was he killed? Because they knew, they knew he needed to be stopped because he was preaching the message and the mission of Jesus Christ and any socialist government that was living in Salvador wants to get rid of all religion because religion assumes a power. A power and an authority that's given by God. To do what? With our energy, our words, our behavior. To preach, to live out the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. Now here's the question. When is the last time somebody would see you outside of church, 
being a Catholic Christian. And say, oh, there's a Catholic Christian. Was it at McDonald's? Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts. When's the last time you saw someone say grace in McDonald's? Or Culver's? Butterburgers, Culver's. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just a selfish diversion. But think about it. When is the last time, without a doubt in your mind or in any one else's mind. When's the last time somebody saw you saying the rosary? Making the sign of the cross. You know, that's, we're a Trinitarian religion. You ever watch people make, make the sign of the cross? Now, people I know, I'm very slow at doing it. Because they're going... <laughs> Did anybody see it? Serious. You ever watch it? When is the last time? One of the things that society needs in these turbulent, persecuted times is Jesus the Christ. It needs a Christian morality. Because let me give you the example of what's happening. If society is coming at you this way and pushing at 80 miles an hour, and we Christians are pushing back at five miles an hour, who's going to win? It's not us. We're going to be moved right out of the scene. And guess what? That is exactly what is happening. Because we Christians are not pushing back. Our voices in the Lord's name need to be heard. Our behavior needs to be seen. And you know, most importantly, who needs to see it? Our children. If our children don't see it and don't experience it from us. You know, when I talk to elderly people, of which I am one, you know what the thing is I look for? Who's supporting the legacy I'm leaving behind me? And what did I give them in my life to support the legacy I'm leaving behind? they're not our living memorial after we're gone, what's going to happen? We will die. We need to be seen. We need to be heard. We need to be convinced of our conviction in the salvific message of Jesus Christ. That's not a game. Because one day, one day, and here's where I'm going to end it. It's when we end it. We're going to approach the Lord in our death. And he's going to say to us, did you do my will on earth with your words and your deeds? And guess what? You can't lie. If you say yes, he'll say, Yours is the kingdom of heaven. If you say, I don't know, goodbye. Or no, I didn't. Goodbye. Because the Christian message depends on how we deliberately, deliberately, not by accident, deliberately, put the Lord's grace into the world. That's why we're here. We're here in this church to support one another and to say, that's what I'm doing, that's what you're doing, let's do it together, and, you know, we feel more comfortable. A dear one of you, I would love to see this. I'm always impressed by these people. Mormons who go door to door. We got people who won't go family to family. Or someone stands in a street corner with the Bible. Hey, Jesus saves. I know what they're doing. What are we doing? 